Hello and welcome to North Star Oasis. I'm your host, Jeff Williams. We're here for another jam-packed, action-filled information overload on this 21st day of November 2019. Thanks for joining us. Um, yes, the uh, impeachment hearings that you've probably been hearing a lot about, according to the Babylon Bee, they have been canceled because the viewership has dropped precipitously this last week, and so it looks like they're going to be canceled. Um, Babylon Bee is a satire site, just so don't, don't take me serious on that one. But you can go to the North Star Oasis YouTube channel where we have put on some of the highlights from the most recent impeachment proceedings. And, of course, our uh, YouTube channel is youtube.com slash North Star Oasis. Uh, we are actually not going to be running a Prager University segment today because we've got a lot to cover, but we're going to keep it focused on one topic. And because we're getting into the holiday season, we're going to get in the holiday spirit a little bit early because the uh, we, we in the past in in the past we have covered the Canadian Pacific Railroad holiday train and every year they make their uh, they make their way through uh, their main line and through Minnesota and they stop in communities with the lighted up train some entertainment and we've covered the uh, holiday train a, c a couple of years past and every year since we started the show five years ago, 2014 was the first time we had done this. And that was actually, I think, the first time we had even heard about the CB holiday train. And so we went out we covered it, and we ran that in uh, uh, a clip there in December. Um, you, know, you know, it was right after it came because it comes in the beginning of December. But nonetheless, you know, we, we've always since then said we want to promote this. We want to promote this. But then we get so wrapped up in everything else that's going on, and all of a sudden the holiday train is here, and we forgot to prep it. We forgot to tell everybody, hey, the train is coming, the train is coming, the train is coming. So we are going to dedicate today to show you what the train was like in the past and to let you know the train is coming. Yes, the CP holiday train, Twin Cities 2019 stops. December 19th in Hastings at 8 p.m., December 10th in Cottage Grove at 5.15 and St. Paul at 6.45. And on December 11th, for those who are inclined to go to the Minneapolis section, Golden Valley at 4.45 p.m., St. Louis Park at 6 p.m., and Minneapolis at 8 p.m. And there is the URL for more information. We will be showing this a few more times uh, throughout the rest of the show. So if you haven't had a chance to copy down all of that URL, We'll give you a little bit more time to look at it. So we want to let you know that the holiday train is coming. And we are going to now show you what that's all about because they play a very important role in the community. So the first thing we're going to do now is show you highlights, a big highlight, from uh, 2014, our first uh, time covering the holiday train. And that was its stop in Hastings and uh, stops in Hastings and St. Paul. So we'll uh, show you now. But anyhow, we're going to start moving on to some more brighter topics because this is the holiday season, right? And we're all supposed to be of good cheer. And speaking of good cheer, I had uh, picked up today's issue of the St. Paul Pioneer Press, and it says, uh, now arriving, good cheer. So if our young intern, Andrew, can come on in a little bit closer, let's take a look. This is the uh, Canadian Pacific holiday train that came through town yesterday. As a matter of fact, it's kind of been in Minnesota all week. Um, the uh, Canadian Pacific had you know, put this up with um, a train all lit up, and they've been doing this for 16 years. And Tuesday, uh, our producer Dallas and I were down in uh, Hastings, and we caught the train there, and then again last night at the Union Depot. So right now, what we're going to really show, because the Pioneer Press only just shows you the, uh, the front page. But what they don't do is they don't really tell you too much. And hey, I'm, I'm happy to see the CP Rail got the uh, front page. Um, but they haven't really shown you really much about the rest of the program. And I'm going to make a quick disclaimer here before we uh, roll the video. Yes, in the last few weeks, you have heard me rail about uh, Warren Buffett's railroad, the BNSF Railroad. 
and talking about rail safety and the, and the Bakken uh, oil. And my point of these last few weeks of discussing this is not to go against the railroad, it's to go against the environmentalists who say that we can't put the Keystone XL pipeline in place because of all this environmental danger without taking into consideration of what's happening now. The railroads are the backbone of, of um, what we as Americans need. And uh, Dallas, we can go ahead and roll the video. <laughs> but with, uh, with railroads, just about everything that we have is in, in our uh, lives are touched by rail. And when I was a young stock clerk working at Sears, it just happened where um, I was in the shipping and receiving area and we would always get the call from the rail yard. Our next uh, container of goods or our next uh, um, truckload of goods is coming off the, tra off the train. And I was always wondering, what, what has a train got to do with getting a shipment of, of goods by truck? Well, that's the, the intermodal system of uh, what we have. And so, you know, the railroads employ a lot of people. As a matter of fact, uh, from the Canadian Pacific uh, Railroad, 15,000 employees uh, live and uh, live in uh, 1,100 North American communities, and they do this because, as they say, hunger is an issue that can and does impact all of our neighbors. Since 1999, the Canadian Pacific Railroad has done, has managed to raise close to nine and a half million dollars of uh, donations and uh, of cash donations and 3.3 million pounds of food that gets donated to local food, uh, food shelves. And they partner in, their, in the communities, especially the communities like Hastings, as you're seeing right now, where they have um, already existing rail infrastructure. Uh, they say that any activities that occur at the outdoor event are organized in partnership with the municipality and the chosen food bank. And so this, the holiday train that they've been doing now for 16 years really impacts a lot of people. And I really have to commend the Canadian Pacific Railroad for putting this on every year for 16 years. I, I really think they've done a fabulous job. And it was really great to see all of the kids that turned out, uh, especially at Hastings when Santa Claus came out and they were all so giddy and excited. And it really brought back the magic of Christmas. And as much as we see the commercialization of the holiday season and stores are now putting their merchandise on the shelves and playing Christmas music that much earlier, just for one two hour stretch, it's just nice to see everybody get together and just enjoy seeing something like this. And that is a live railroad. And here it is coming into Union Depot last night. In contrast to last year, the uh, temperature was actually halfway decent. Uh, I know last year at this time it was probably about two degrees above zero at this hour, and yet, uh, you know, last night was about 37, 38 degrees. It was really foggy, but that kind of really added to the mystique of the train.
And right now, the train is actually in Loretto. It's at uh, Hennepin County Road 19 crossing. And they should have just started the concert because they do have a 45 minute concert which you'll see some excerpts of here momentarily. Uh, they will also be in Buffalo arriving at 5.45 p.m. Up in Annandale at 7.15 p.m. tonight. And up in Eden Valley uh, at 8.45 tonight. And then tomorrow the train will be up in Glenwood, Alexandria, Henning, Detroit Lakes, Plummer, and Three River Falls before it heads into North Dakota. Extraordinaire. He's a little bit shy, you guys. Mr. Andy Cummings, everyone. Good evening, St. Paul! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what an awesome crowd, and welcome to the big debut of the holiday train at St. Paul Union Depot. <laughs> so we've been taking this train across North America for 16 years. In that time, we have raised nine and a half million dollars and 3.3 million pounds of food for food banks all across this land. We do it because folks like you turn out and you make generous donations and you sing and you dance and you are overall awesome. Thank you so much. Those of you with cameras and phones out there, please do visit our Facebook page. We are holding the Capture the Spirit photo contest. You go there and you win, you get a four pack of tickets to ride next year's holiday train and an extra big donation to a food bank of your choice. I would like to invite out at this time uh, Ramsey County Commissioner Rafael Ortega. Commissioner Ortega, would you please come out? Thank you and good evening. First, I'd like to say thank you to the CP Rail uh, they've been a good partner over the years uh, with the Ramsey County. I'm also chair of the Rail Authority, and I've had a good relationship. They've worked with us uh, on a lot of issues over the years. But today, we want to thank them for choosing St. Paul uh, in Ramsey County uh, for the holiday train. Uh, the food we've collected, the turnout has been huge and we've collected so much food and contributions and that makes a difference. And uh, I've had the pleasure to, uh, to designate where those resources are going. And we've, I picked Neighborhood House and I want to tell you why I picked Neighborhood House. When I first came here 35 year, about 35 years ago to be, uh, I was a graduate student at the U of M. Uh, I lived on the west side for over 25 years and, and that's where I first went and I consider it uh, a bit like the Ellis Island of St. Paul. 
where a, lo <laughs> where a, a lot of a lot of newcomers come uh, and uh, come to participate. And I stayed here, and I and I'm so happy that I was able to give back. And today, Canadian Pacific is a good partner in giving back uh, to our community and to make Christmas uh, for those of us in our community that maybe aren't doing as well as we are. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your contributions. And uh, and I guess you'll take it over now, right? Thank you very much, Commissioner. I'd like to invite up to Joan and Christine from Neighborhood House. And I'd also like to invite out Jeff, who is a locally based CP employee. He's a road foreman of engines out of St. Paul here. We're going to be presenting a check tonight to Neighborhood House for $10,000, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Joan, would you like to say a few words? I would. Hello, St. Paul. Woo! Thank you so much for your contributions tonight because we couldn't do our work without your help. So on behalf of Neighborhood House and our community, thank you and happy holidays. Thank you so much, everybody. At this time, it is my pleasure to turn it back over to Kira Isabella and the Holiday Train Band. He's a little bit shy. Mr. Andy Cummings, everybody! Good evening, Hastings! What a great crowd out there tonight. You guys are awesome. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. We are I'd like to uh, invite out Mayor Hicks to say a few words, please. Mayor Hicks. Thank you, Andy. Is this a great event tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Uh, quote out there, it says, if Christmas isn't found in your heart, you won't find it under a tree. Tonight is a great reminder of that holiday spirit. As a community, we gather tonight to celebrate the spirit of the season. We come together as one community in friendship to share our gifts so that all in our Hastings community may be lifted. I cannot think of a more noble cause. <laughs> thank you. But I want to thank Canadian Pacific and the Holiday Train for, for serving as a reminder to every community that you visit along these railroad tracks what it is to celebrate the holiday season and Christmas with gifts and donations music and song, and of course, the lights. For the spirit of our Christmas season is not lost, but found in everyone here tonight and in your heart. And in every community in which you stop, where this train stops, whether it be Cottage Grove in Canada, Dubuque Island, it is a celebration of our shared humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Hicks, that was beautiful. I also want to invite out now somebody who's been doing a lot of work to support the food shelf, Bruce from Merchants Bank. Would you come out and say a few words, please? Thank you, everyone. Tonight, I just want to thank everyone for the who participated in our 10 days of giving. Um, 10 years ago, we started this program to help youth learn about giving and the gift of giving. So what we, in Hastings this year, our elementary school students um, brought their food drive donations to us. We'll be picking them up tomorrow. And middle school and high school students are involved in the coin drive that we facilitated for that as well. So I appreciate all those gifts and donations and thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. Next up, I'd like to invite out Chris from Hastings Family Service. And uh, also, Alec, who's a locally based CP employee, is coming out. We're going to be giving a donation tonight to Hastings Family Service for $4,500! Oh, oh my 
everyone for coming out tonight. There, this that is probably one of the largest crowds we've oh, had. Yeah, we want to thank Christ Family Church for putting on the Holiday Dream Jamboree. Together, you guys are helping to feed the hungry. And there are hungry people in Hastings. There are homeless people in Hastings. But the reality is that they can provide, they can get help and hope at Hastings Family Service because you guys help make that happen. Merchants helps make that happen, and the Canadian Pacific Railway helps make that happen. So thank you for supporting us this evening. We want you to have a great time, and we want you to party and dance, because the music is going to be great. So thank you to everyone, and Merry Christmas. Thank you so much, Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to turn it back over to Gary Isabella. everybody in St. Paul to please put, put their hands together and give a very warm welcome to Home Free, everyone! That's how we roll! but I guess and you'd like to hear a little bit more. Adam, come on, show these people what you can do. to say that it was a fabulous show that they had put on. Uh, because of a lot of copyright issues, we have chosen not to put a lot of the entertainment there, but I'll tell you, both Kira Isabella and Home Free were absolutely fascinating. And I highly encourage you to go to their websites, which we had posted and will post again. Uh, and, and just take, you know. So there we have the 
Hastings and Con uh, Hastings and St. Paul stops of the CP Holiday Train from 2014. Um, that was again our first exposure to it, and then right after that. Uh, come to find out that uh, my producer, uh, Dallas Pearson, he and I find out about the Twin Cities Model Railroad Museum, and so we go to their holiday, uh, uh, it, was a, um, it was night trains, I think it was called, and they had this big display on their model, and what do we see? Somebody had made a model of the CP holiday train, and we ended up interviewing them. Uh, but we're not going to show you that interview. It is actually out there. Uh, I think we went with that about a week or two after uh, the episode where we aired uh, the pre uh, preceding. So, you know, that was our real first exposure, but then we kind of let it sit for a little while, and then we got to the point where we started thinking about the holiday train again. And so we decided this time that the place to go was Cottage Grove. So if you notice, December 9th, Hastings, that's 2019, that's coming up. And December 10th, St. Paul, 645. So you just saw 2014, Hastings and St. Paul stops. And then Cottage Grove, so it goes Hastings, Cottage Grove, St. Paul. And so we decided to go down to Cottage Grove, and we ended up running into the person who organized the uh, St. Paul stop. Because as you've noticed in that last video, that this also is to benefit you know, the local community, to raise food donations and money to support the people in the local communities. And Mary Slusser really was instrumental in, in building up the organization in Cottage Grove. And when she came onto our show, she was uh, kind enough uh, to actually bring me a present, which I still use to this day. Uh, that is a, um, a mug. And there it is. Um, let's see if I can. A little hard to see, but there's the CP Holiday Train on the stainless steel uh, logo on the stainless steel travel mug. So, again, thank you, uh, Mary, for for that uh, just to let you know I still use it and so I still really appreciate uh, the hospitality there but more importantly they do great work and that's the biggest reason why we're sitting here to talk about the holiday train the train itself is wonderful it's great to be around but I'll tell you this it's giving back to the people in the local communities that is what makes this special. That it's not like, oh, you got to pay X number of dollars to see this thing come up and then it's going to be funneled back to the corporate office and it'll be distributed with only a few cents coming back to local community. The CP Railroad doesn't do that. The, what you, what's raised in Cottage Grove stays in Cottage Grove. What's raised in Hastings stays in Hastings. What's raised in St. Paul stays in St. Paul. It benefits the people here. And that is why we so ardently encourage you to support this. And this is why we are big cheerleaders. I guess if you could say there's an official charity of, the, of North Star Oasis, um, I guess this would be it. The CP Holiday Train. Because we believe so much in their mission that we've covered, well, we've, this is our fourth time actually making a major reference, plus we put it in our introduction. So we, we're firm believers that this is a great program, this is a great, um, the great people, and this is a great experience. So if you have not been to the holiday train, please show up on 9th, 10th, or 11th of December. That's coming up. That's the reason why, just before Thanksgiving, I'm telling you about this now, so that way we're not going to tell you when you have already haven't heard about it and you've already blocked that time. Put this on your calendar as your number one priority for one of those days. Pick a stop. Show up with uh, non-perishable uh, non food. Go to the Holiday Train website. Let's show that one more time here before we show our next clip. We'll get it right. Look for the graphic. There we go. Uh, www.cpr.ca slash holiday hyphen train forward slash schedule hyphen united hyphen states. So, or you can just go to Google and type in CP Holiday Train. 
Mind you, you have to look for the U.S. train schedule because it's the Canadian Pacific Railway. They have a U.S. train. They also have a uh, Canadian train. We want to look for the United States train. And on their website, there's a tab on the left that shows Minnesota. You can pull that up. And then on their website, there are more detailed instructions for where to go. So it gives you de detailed instructions on Hastings, Cottage Grove, St. Paul, Golden Valley, um, Minneapolis, so that way you know where you can go. There are usually a lot of people who do show up. It's not to the point where it's jam-packed to where you can't breathe, so you don't have to worry about it being that you know full to over capacity. But at the same time, you do know that there are going to be a good throng of people. So what we're going to show right now is our interview, uh, part one of our interview with Mary Slusser from 2017. All right, we're having slight technical difficulties here. We uh, we have a couple of videos lined up, but we've got them out of uh, out of sync. So now we're just trying to make sure we get our order correct. And so again, uh, I can't speak highly enough of what they do at the Canadian Pacific Railroad. They, they do fabulous work, and I'm going to see if I can pull up some facts here on their holiday train. That's what we want is the Cottage Grove stop. Um, we want the interview with Mary Slusser one, part one. But in the meantime, uh, let's see what we've got here for frequently asked questions from CP Holiday Train. See, I'm on uh, cpr.ca forward slash holiday hyphen train forward slash FAQS. Uh, so... Well, we think we've got it, so let's go right on over to the... ...who is also the co-chair of the Holiday Train Committee. Mary, welcome to North Star Oasis, and it was great meeting you uh, on the 9th uh, over at the train, and I'm so glad you could join us today. Thank you for coming. And thank you for inviting me, Josh. So, I, I really want to start off, before we really start talking about the Holiday Train itself, really want to talk about Friends in Need Food Shelf. What can you tell me about your organization? Okay. Well, Michelle Ragath is the director of the Friends in Need Food Shelf, and the Holiday Train is obviously a fundraiser for that, um, for that organization. And the funds that we receive from the Holiday Train are actually the largest portion of their income. So it's really important that we perform really well before the train comes in because our funds can um, pay for approximately 20, or not pay for, but provide for about 28,000 families or people for the food shelf. Wow. Yeah, and so because of all this additional funds that have been coming in, they can get, they can purchase some fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, more of the healthy products for their clients. How many clients, do you, you know, I'm looking for more of a ballpark, not for mm -hmm. specifics, but how many people does Friends in Need uh, serve? Yeah, it's, I think when I talked to Michelle, she said about 28,000 people a year. Okay, okay. 28,000 yeah. people a year. Yes. Uh, is that Cottage Grove or St. Paul Park or what, what communities are involved with that? Sure. The Friends in Need Food Shelf actually covers and provides food for Cottage Grove, St. Paul Park, Newport, and Gray Cloud Island. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, is there anything that you can tell me about people who have been helped? Um, you know, I don't get, I used to be on the Friends in Need Food Shelf Board for six years, but that was a few years ago, so I'm not in on the day-to-day -day, um, activities of that event, or excuse me, of that organization, but the people that come in are from, from the area, and they have to fill out a form, they, they're interviewed, 
and then if they qualify, which most people do qualify, then they are able to um, get food. And unlike other food shelves, our Friends in Need food shelf is available to their clients every other week instead of once a month like a, oh, okay. a lot of the other food banks are. And again, like I said, we're able to provide more healthy food. And some of the funds also go to emergency services. So if somebody's car breaks down or if their phone stops working, there is funds available for that type of assistance as well. How much would you say that on a yearly budget that the organization takes in and spends? Um, Jeff, I'm, again, I'm not able okay. to answer that question because I'm not on the board any longer, so okay. I don't have... That no problem yeah, there. Okay. <laughs> um, I could make up a number, but yeah. it won't work. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, you know, from at least from the time that you were active and on the board, I mean, did you ever notice that, you know, more of a you know, rise and decline in the time of interest that people had in contributing? I'm looking at the contribution and not so much the need end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, throughout the whole year, there they do have different fundraisers, but obviously, I would say closer to the holiday season, people tend to have more of a need. And there's um, there's toy drives, there's um, Thanksgiving drives, and um, school drives. So throughout the whole year, the Friends in Need Food Shelf is providing help for their clients, and um, it seems like it the numbers keep growing and growing where the need is there, and. You know, it just takes one life situation to make a change in your whole life where things can go backwards. And then, do you have a, a website or any way that if any of our viewers want to help out and contribute that they can get in touch with? I believe it's www.finfood.org. Okay. Um, I'd have to check that to be sure. Well, what that's... we're going to do right now is we are going to uh, show you some of the entertainment that they had with the train while we look up the website. We also have what we call the 10 Days of Giving. Uh, Merchants Bank in Cottage Grove organizes that and they work with our school district. So. Uh, there's barrels that are distributed to different schools. They collect um, personal care items, food, money, pretty much anything for the food shelf. And then just as of yesterday, they went and collected all of those. So that's another big fundraiser that we do. Supermom's Bakery donates um, a thousand loaves of bread for us. And it's like a sweet bread. And so we go out to the churches and businesses and we sell the bread for $5 a piece. Um, Anchor Bank has a holiday train cutout. So it kind of goes wow. on and on. It, it keeps growing every year. So you really need to have your fundraisers pre-holiday train. Have you ever ridden on the train? You know, I actually did. Um, I love trains. As I mentioned to you earlier, I'm from La Crosse, grew up close to the trains on Copeland Avenue. So if anybody's from La Crosse, they'll know where that is. Um, but the, before 2003, it was actually 2002, I must have uh, driven, the, driven, not driven. <laughs> I've been on the holiday train. I asked if I could ride from La Crosse up to Red Wing and just see what other communities were doing. And they allowed me to do that. And it was really a memorable experience because I got off at each of those stops and just kind of watched and see what everybody else was doing. And then part of the fun was to be able to get out on the back end of the train. And I can't remember what that's called. A, a cook I can't remember, but it's a black pat, the platform on the back end of the train. And we were riding along Highway 61, waving at people, and actually Santa Claus was right next to me. He was riding the train with me, too. So that was a pretty cool experience. Other than that, can you tell me about any real experience that you had, you know, especially at Cottage Grove? You know, what's your favorite experience for the holiday train? I would say my favorite experience is when Cheryl Crow came. What year Everybody was, thinks what year that. Was that was uh, 2013. Okay. 2013, and that was the Canadian Pacific's 15th anniversary. So they really had this huge event plan, and so we moved the event other to outside of the area we normally have the holiday train because we needed more space. So they actually created a city. It was like a winter wonderland city, oh, and it wow. had like a little buildings in it. And Cheryl Crow was our guest singer. And ever since she was there, everybody thinks that we're going to have her back again every year. And they think, like, how did you get Cheryl Crow? I said, that wasn't up to me that year, but that was a special event. And um, I think a lot of people will remember that, too. I actually know a couple of people. One who was uh, at Cottage Grove on the 9th, and uh, another friend of mine, uh, 
they were bantering back and forth about the holiday train and it's like, oh yeah, I remember when Cheryl Crow was there and it was awfully cold and I was at the St. Paul stop and I'm saying, I missed that one. Oh, no. <laughs> it, was, it was cold and it was windy and I think it was probably one of our coldest nights ever. So the attendance wasn't as large as we had hoped for, but it was an awesome evening. Um, Can I just mention to you about the 2010 yes. blizzard? Oh, by all means. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for, ex yeah. for experience. I had one of the yeah. questions I was going to ask, and then I, I actually had it listed here, and then I can't find it. So go right oh. ahead and tell me about that. Oh, okay. I yeah. love hearing about experiences. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, in 2010, if you think back that far, um, Holiday Train obviously was planned for that day, and that's when the blizzard came to the cities. And so I remember I was on the phone, I had one phone to my right ear, one phone to my left ear. We were trying to decide if we needed to cancel the event. And just for the safety of the community, they did decide to cancel the event. Um, so loving trains like I do, I thought I can't just sit here. So I actually went down to the holiday train site just to check it out and see. And there were people sitting. It was like snow packed, but there was a few people out bundled up and so I knocked on their window and I just said holiday trains cancel but would you like a glow stick so I still was down there for that event and um, no that was our only one that was ever canceled and as they say in show business the show must go on and mm -hmm. even if people <clears throat> only got glow sticks there was part of the part of the show right. uh, actually I do remember that storm but not from here I was actually in Detroit then oh and okay. my father called me that morning and said are you aware that the Metrodome roof collapsed? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no. And of course, I'm in Detroit. He's thinking I'm back here. And he says, well, why are you? I'm in Detroit. Well, <laughs> later that afternoon, that snowstorm caught up with us. And I happened to have been at the Minnesota Vikings New York Giants game. Oh. Because the dome roof had collapsed, it was held at Ford Field in Detroit, and I was actually there for that. Oh, my gosh. So I remember <clears throat> that particular it, snowstorm, and that's the reason why I wasn't around here for the holiday train then. Oh, okay. That's but, a really good reason why. <laughs> but that was definitely a memorable experience. Um, and then uh, other than Cheryl Crow, who, who is your favorite entertainer been so far? Well, every You've seen year, a lot it's, of them. yeah, I have seen a lot of them. I mean, this last time it was is Terry Clark. She is an awesome country western singer, um, and then of course that's the first time I've seen Dallas Smith. Kelly Preston's been on there quite a few times, so they switch them up so often that I can't really say that I have a favorite singer. But other than Cheryl Crow, because I actually was able to go backstage and have a one-on-one -on -one with her, or a photo, and um, and so that Not that bad. was pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. So now they had given you a award at this last uh, at this last uh, event because you are stepping down as the chair of the holiday train committee. Mm -hmm. Fifteen years. It's time to turn the reins over to somebody else. What's going to happen with your involvement, and what's going to happen with the Cottage Grove stop in the future? Okay. Well, I feel very confident that after fifteen years and one million dollars, I feel like. I think it's a good time to, <laughs> to step aside, but I could see that a few years ago. The event has gotten, has grown so large, and I just feel like it's time for somebody else to take over. Um, I know the CP had asked me, like, whoa, who's going to be taking, taking care of this, uh, this role of the holiday train? But um, actually, Randy Bachman, who works at Merchants Bank, has been on the committee for about six years. And um, after a couple of asking him if he would take over as chair, he, he agreed. And he's going to have a co-chair as well. Um, but I feel very confident that the, the holiday train is going to run as normal. And I always like to change or add a few things each year. So he will maybe do that as well. So I feel very confident we'll be just fine. Well, the show must go on. Now, before we leave, I am going to ask you one personal question. Uh -oh. And it's the one that I ask every guest on this show. From when you were a young child, what is your favorite Christmas memory? Um, and yes, that's intentionally to put you on the spot. Yeah, really. Because I do really, that with everybody. It is on the spot. Um, well, I think, I think my, the memory would be is I had a bedroom with my sisters and brother and sisters just off of where the Christmas tree was. And to this day, I would have sworn that I saw Santa Claus putting presents under the tree. And I truly believe that it was him, because I do believe in the magic of Christmas. Do you remember what the present was that you got that year? I don't remember that one. I just remember that whole him. I saw Santa Claus. I just know that. <laughs> it was real. 
Well, he is jolly old St. Nicholas, that's for sure. Well, Mary Slusser, thank you very much for uh, showing up and, and giving us your time uh, for our audience. Oh, and, and also, thank you for bringing me a present. Um, a tumbler with the CP Holiday Train logo on it. And there it is. Um, it's still probably not that well to be seen. But still, it is a very special present nonetheless because the CP Holiday Train is one of my favorite things. And, and there's my mug. Thank you so much, Mary. Uh, anyhow, the... CP Holiday Train. Now, uh, you know, we've covered a lot about, you know, what goes on. You know, they operate in over 1,100 communities across the country with, they've got over 12,000 employees. You know, since 1999, the Holiday Train has now raised, because this is a couple of, you know, last, that interview is a couple of years old, they have now raised more than $15.8 uh, million in Canadian currency and four and a half million pounds of food for North American food banks. That's a lot of money and a lot of food. Uh, and they operate in over 1,100 communities with over 12,000 employees. And they know that hunger is an issue and it does impact their neighbors. The neighbors include you. Uh, so, you know, here's one of the things that they say from their website on how do you choose the stops. There are a number of factors that determine our schedule. We consider our entire network of track, but we'll largely base the decision around participation from the community, including the support of local elected officials, the food bank, and a willingness from community members to come, uh, excuse me, to come out and support the cause. We try to include as many communities as we can. We will alternate routes from one year to the next. And I will tell you this, uh, on, the, on this year's route, um, prior to them coming here, they actually have spent more time in Iowa this year than they have in the last couple of years. So they do, you know, as they mentioned on the website, they do make some deviations. Uh, and as far as the train lights, uh, the holiday train is about 1,000 feet in length with 14 brightly decorated rail cars. The cars are decorated with hundreds of thousands of technology-leading LED lights and holiday designs celebrating the spirit of the giving season. When the U.S. holiday train clears U.S. customs between Detroit and Chicago, they turn the exterior lights off. Otherwise, the holiday train lights are always on. And in case you have a question about the locomotive, uh, it was originally built in 1957. Two GP20C 2200 series trains were rebuilt in 2013 to pull the two holiday trains. Each locomotive has 2,000 horsepower, is 56.02 feet in length, and weighs 275,000 pounds. So what we're going to do, because we've just shown you some excerpts from our, uh, our interview with Mary Slusser, from 2017. Uh, we, I'm not even sure if we've got them in the correct sequence, so if things seem a little out of order, that, that's all right. We're going to show you excerpts. And we have a second excerpt with our interview with Mary Slusser that we're going to bring you right now. That we're going to bring you right now. Some of the entertainment. Now, of course, the, we, we've um, edited it for abbreviation purposes. And if you go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Northstar Oasis, you will be able to see the entire production from the time the train pulls in to the time it leaves. Uh, we had our cameras rolling to give you a taste of the Canadian Pacific Holiday Train at their Cottage Grove stop this year. We've, uh, we covered uh, two stops uh, three years ago. That was Hastings and St. Paul, and we know that we had gone over on uh, Cottage Grove, so this time we want to atone for that. And so we're here with the co-chair of the Holiday Train Committee for uh, the, the uh, Cottage Grove stop, Mary Slusser. Mary, tell me about those glow sticks. <laughs> the glow sticks are awesome. As I was watching the video clip, um, I noticed that the musicians actually put them on their guitars and on their um, instruments, so that was pretty cool to see. Um, we're known for our glow sticks, and it was something that we started the very first year of the holiday train. Um, I actually, because I work for a Spartan promotional group, I was actually able to donate 500, I believe, the first year. And I put my logo on it and handed them out to the first 500 kids. Since then, we've um, added about four more other sponsors. So this wow. year, we had about 3,000 glow sticks 
that we gave out. And we only give them to the kids. I know some parents get a little bit irritated with us because they want one as well. But we want to make sure the kids have them. And when the CP comes in, they say they can always see us. They know that they're in Cottage Grove because of the glow sticks. So it's kind of very symbolic uh -huh. for our community. So this started off in 2003. How did you get involved? I love that question. <laughs> My husband actually was a locomotive engineer for the Canadian Pacific Railway and since then has retired. But he came home from work one day and said, Mary, we have to go see this train in St. Paul. I had no idea that it was a fundraiser. I had no idea it was for a food shelf. So we drove to St. Paul. And I think it was on Cedar, Cedar, uh, Cedar Street. Um, but anyway, the train came in and I can still remember the image of it coming around the, the curve and it was just the headlights and the and the lights are not as beautiful as they are nowadays because these are all LED lights that they've got on the, on the train. But once it stopped, I remember the mayor of St. Paul got off and then I saw hot cocoa being served and it all came together that it was a fundraiser for the food shelf. So was this been so about 2002? It was 2002, yes, okay. yeah, December 2002. And as I stood there watching this event unfold, I said to my husband, I wonder what I need to do to get this train to stop in Cottage Grove. So. What did you need to do to get the train to stop at Cottage Grove? <laughs> well, I needed some connection with the, uh, Canadian, the Canadian Pacific. And because, because my husband working for the railroad, I had a few people that um, were able to give me a few phone calls in Canada. And so I did. I made a few phone calls. And um, it didn't happen overnight because they told me at first that it, they were not going to stop in Cottage Grove because they said the train stopped in Hastings and it stopped in St. Paul. They didn't see any reason for it to stop in Cottage Grove. But I was very persistent because I thought it should stop in Cottage Grove. We have a great community, a very generous community, and why not? It's on its way to St. Paul. So um, after six months of making phone calls and emails, we finally, um, they finally agreed. And I'm sure there were some things behind the scenes, too, that I was not aware of, but they finally agreed to have it stop at Cottage Grove. So what were some of the parameters that they say, all right, we'll do it, but you need to do this, that, and the other. What are some of those things? You know, you know they really never gave me any parameters. They just kind of let me go with it. But what I did is that was my first question to myself was, like, now what do I do? Because I really didn't think they were going to let the train stop. So um, I'm very active in our community. So I went to a Chamber of Commerce event. And I just started going around to people saying, do you like trains? Are you interested in being on a committee with me? And um, the committee started out with maybe two or three different people. And one was actually the current, well, the, the past mayor of Cottage Grove, Sandy Shealy. And, um, and then it just kind of expanded from there. How did Friends and Neen get involved? Well, because the uh, holiday train, the purpose of the holiday train is to raise awareness of hunger throughout North America, but especially in your own community. And our food shelf is the Friends in Need food shelf, which is located in St. Paul Park. So obviously that's the food bank that we went to. Okay. You set off a goal, and that last clip had expanded on it in that ceremony, that you wanted to raise $1 million. How did you come up with that goal, and d was that a big figure for you of, of watching grow over the years? Mm -hmm. Well, I could see that we were getting close to a million dollars after probably 11, 12 years. And you start adding the numbers together, and I'm like, okay, three more years, it'll be a million dollars. Um, the last few years, have been very fortunate to have raised about 90000 each of those years. And so we just kind of put the goal out there, and, and I looked ahead and I thought, you know, 15 years, a million dollars, I think those are good numbers to, to make work for us. So that, for that goal, is that like the whole year we've raised this amount, or is that a set period of time, or how yeah. does that? Yeah. Well, the million dollars was, I wish I could say it was in one year's time, but no, it was I'm over just, 15 years. Yeah, I'm just yeah. talking about as far as, you know, I guess, how should I phrase this? What's the, for each year that attributed to that? I mean, uh, is, is it a year or is it, you know, for every stop, every year that the holiday train stops? I mean, how is all that calculated? Is it, we're starting this and whatever we raise year after year after year is that million dollar goal or is it just December to November, December? Yeah, it, it just actually evolved over time because the first year the holiday train stopped in, in Cottage Grove in 2003. Um, I looked up my notes and we raised about 13000 that first year and then the numbers just kind of accruing and so it just just came up with the $1 million that is just kind of like an even, a good even number to achieve that okay. goal. 
What kinds of coordination with the railroad are involved? I mean, now that you've been doing this for 15 years, you know, it's, it's not, I, I know it's more than just, oh, we're just going to make an announcement and here's our annual stop. I, I know there's more to it than mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Well, we're very lucky to have the train stop in Cottage Grove and they continue to stop in Cottage Grove and because of how much money is uh, contributed to the food shelf. Um, but right now, pretty much in September, October, I will connect with Andy Cummings, as you saw on the on the video. He's the uh, communications director. I'm not sure if that's his okay. exact title, but um, I'll just send him an email and I'll say, "Hey, Andy, it's Mary checking in, and you know, I've worked with him for so many years that he knows who I am." And and just say, "Do you have a date for us?" Because they're the ones that give us the date. We don't get to choose. And this year, mm -hmm. we're we're lucky to have a Saturday as the date. So they really don't. Um, kind of hands off. I think they know we've done it for so many years and I've had other communities um, call me and say, hey, I know you've had a successful holiday train event. What do we need to do that in our community? So I've been able to help other And what cities. have you been able to tell them? So, well, I tell them we do a lot of pre-fundraising activities. They say, don't wait till the train arrives before to collect all your money because that's, <coughs> you know, we collect, you know, quite a few thousand dollars that evening, but we have, um, would you like me to tell you about the fundraising events yes. that we have? Yes, <laughs> please do. Okay. And then also, before you get into that, sure. Dallas, do we have the uh, website? Here is the website. It is F-I-N-F-O-O-D, finfood.org. And that's the Friends in Need food shelf. And we uh, ask that if you want to donate or if you happen to live in the area and, and uh, need service, you talk to this organization and they do a bang up job down there and again um, holiday train in Cottage Grove is to benefit the friends in need food shelf finfood.org and check them out so what have you told those other communities okay well I said you need to you know organize your fundraisers so for the Cottage Grove stuff what we do is we have a spaghetti dinner fundraiser and it didn't start out as big as it is right now. And this is actually the second year, but before with that, we did a pancake breakfast fundraiser. But all of a sudden, the Cottage Grove Lions, the St. Paul Park, Newport Lions, all the Lions got together. And we are in Thrivent Financial. There's so many different organizations that now work on this one particular fundraiser. So that was very successful. We also So anyhow, what we're going to do now for the remainder of this show, which is just a couple more minutes left, uh, we are if you are going to show up at the CP Holiday Train on the 9th, 10th, or 11th of December, uh, you're asked to bring a non-perishable food item. Just some uh, recommendation here. Um, reduced sodium can and jarred foods are preferred. Um, whole wheat crackers, uh, hot and cold cereals, granola bars, muffins. Uh, they're looking for grain products, uh, canned vegetables and fruit, 100% fruit juice, tomato sauce, canned soup, tomato juice, applesauce. These are the types of items that they're asking that you bring with you. Uh, canned meat and fish, peanut butter, canned baked beans, dried or canned beans and lentils. So really, essentially, they're looking for anything that ha that, that's going to be having some shelf life. You know, stuff you buy in the grocery store that you're going to eat already in a can. They don't want you to make up a nice dinner and then bring it over because it's not going to go to its intended purposes. What they would like is to have something that the food banks can give out to people in need at the times that they need to give them out. That's why it's non-perishable uh, food products. And if you can do that and then show up uh, at those locations, uh, we'll show one last time. Uh, if we can, the Cottage Grove, Hastings, St. Paul. Yeah, there we go. Hastings, 8 p.m. on the 9th. Cottage Grove, St. Paul on the 10th. And for Dallas Pearson Producer, I'm your host, Jeff Williams. We're watching North Star Oasis. Reminding you, there's 33 shopping days left until Christmas. And we will see you at the holiday train on the 9th, 10th, or 11th. Thanks for watching. See you next week.